and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Skylar Cunningham with Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. Today's webinar is part of a webinar series leading up to the annual TWI Summit and Kata Summit taking place February 17th through the 21st, 2020 in Austin, Texas. Learn more about what we call Skills Week by visiting www.leanfrontiers.com forward slash Skills Week. Due to the short nature of our presentation, we will not be fielding questions. Today's session is being recorded. Look for an email within a few hours after the session ends for a link to the recording. Let me introduce today's presenter, Crystal Y. Davis. Crystal is the CEO and founder of the Lean Coach Incorporated. TLC helps organizations disrupt in lean and leadership so that they can achieve their growth and people strategies through an aligned and harmonious continuous improvement strategy. TLC provides strategy consulting, coaching, training, and workshop services. Crystal's 20 plus year lean career spans over a number of business functions, industries and disciplines in manufacturing and supply chain, automotive, automotive consumer packaged goods, medical devices, strategy deployment, and training, facilitation, coaching, and speaking. With that, I'll hand it over to Crystal. Good morning, Skylar. Thank you so much for that introduction. This morning, I wanna to talk to uh, everyone about this thing called leading as a coach and this phenomenon that's sweeping a lot of organizations and talk to you really about a couple of different things. So one, you know, what's driving this change? What's happening within organizations that is causing this increased demand for leaders to serve as coaches? And then what does that really mean for the leader? And you know, what are some expected outcomes? What should leaders be doing to increase their skills? Do they need to be certified or not in coaching? What are the best uh, coaching models? And then I want to talk about three coaching skills that I think every leader, manager and leader should be working to develop as they continue on this journey to lead as a coach. So with that, I wanna start out with like what the pain is. So as I do a lot of research around coaching and also in working with my clients, one of the things that I find is that um, there's this need for organizations to shift from command and control to more of providing guidance, coaching. And the reason is because of the sheer nature of where organizations are in terms of the rapid pace of change, Techno technological disruptions, challenges as it relates to skill sets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so what organizations are finding is that they need leaders to be able to manage better in, in situational instances rather than you know, learning how things have always been and how to carry those things forward. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about that. And I think that um, in order to really frame up the purpose of why managers and leaders need to develop as coaches, we have to start with understanding what is the challenge before the organization, why is this required, um, and really aligning from a purpose position um, for a person to really understand that, you know, they're not just going to need to get training for training's sake, but they need to really upskill. So let's talk a little bit about this war on talent thing. So I wanna talk and share just a few statistics. Um, so the ICF, which is the International Coaches, Coaching Federation has performed a, a study um, and they have predicted the following trends between uh, 2020 and 2022. So let me share with, share with those. And this is actually from the organization's perspective, not necessarily from the coach's perspective. So organizations, 80 percent, uh, 86% of respondents within organizations said that they want increased leadership development programs and they want those programs to have additional coaching options. The second one is that 83% believe that leading as a coach training, meaning teaching coaching skills, is the number two area of focus. So we've got one leadership development programs, but then two actually teaching coaching skills. And then the third, the number three um, 
metric came in at 80% of them believe that there will they will see an increase in external executive coaching. So for all of the uh, lean consultants out there, uh, this is definitely an area where, where you can focus. But all of these metrics speak to the increasing need and desire of organizations to actually bring coaching in at multiple levels within the organization, not just at the top tier of the organization. So then you've got to think about, well, what challenges will that bring to the organization? We've got a lot of people within organizations, especially large corporations, but often too few coaches. So this is yet another uh, reason why companies are looking to develop coaching skills within every manager. So there are a few things that the organization will need to consider um, as they overcome these challenges and drive uh, managers and leaders to become coaches. So one of the first things that they have to do is they have to define very clearly for the organization what coaching means within their organization. Uh, and there are a number of facets that come along with defining what coaching means within their organization. Uh, and also culturally, what shifts they'll have to make, especially if they are a very, very staunch command and control organization. And they'll have to think about how to do this while still running the business, still firefighting, still solving problems every day, still overcoming challenges, and still providing value and serving their, their customers. The second thing that they'll have to do is they'll have to clearly outline what new behaviors they expect of, of managers and leaders. And that's critical to help these managers and leaders know what's expected from them and how, where they need to be upskilling and how they need to perform um, within the organization. Basically, you have to answer the question for them, how are you expecting them to show up different, right? Mm -hmm. And not, not leave it where, um, you know, there are lots of assumptions about what it means to be to coach, uh, when to coach, when not to coach, you know, so forth and so on. The, the third thing that organizations will have to do is they will need to do some training. They will have to offer training in or if they're really truly going to expect their uh, managers and leaders to, to step up to the plate and to provide the type of guidance that will, um, will move the organization forward and help them accomplish their goals. The fourth thing is they'll have to create a safe environment. We talk a lot in the lean community about providing a psychologically safe environment for uh, people to experiment, for people to ask questions, uh, to, um, to learn, right? And so the same applies here as it relates to leaders, to leading as a coach. Because you won't, even if you have training, you won't, um, without practice, right? Without practice, you won't get it right the first time. And so they will need to understand how they're going to handle um, handle the the wave, if you will, as as uh, leaders and managers continue to migrate or increase their skill set to become a coach. Then they'll have to think about what skills assessments will they be, will they need to use or add within the organization to make sure that they're effectively measuring performance, right? So we're changing behavior, we're changing expect the expected outcome of these leaders. Now we have to have a way to measure the effectiveness of the training that they've done and the skills that they've, that they've spent. And then the last one that's very important, one thing that we talk about a lot in the lean communi community is reflection, but being intentional about uh, establishing reflection time uh, once, once a leader comes out of coaching. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that uh, a little later, All right? So when we think about this, I've talked about it from what it means from the organization. What does this mean actually from for the leader? And I'm sure you can imagine that anytime you ask someone to change, there are lots of things that happen for them naturally as a person, right? So they may experience fear, they may experience doubt, they may not have clarity about, uh, even if you explain what you expect, they may have trust issues. Um, they may not believe that the organization is really going to change and support them. Um, and so the, you have to really think about the journey from an individual perspective and understand who you're dealing with, what's happened in their career, what is their current um, influence within the organization or lack thereof, 
And then how do you support them on this journey um, as they move from becoming a manager of task, a manager of, of uh, productivity, et cetera, and becoming truly a coach and a guide that really will help um, create an environment where um, as people are making daily decisions, as they're experimenting, as they're identifying hypotheses that, that the leader themselves has the right level of support um, that they will need within the organization or need from the organization, right? And then that also means, you know, for those people that they report into, what kind of support will they need or training will they need in turn, in turn to be able to support the leader on this journey? So we have to look at it kind of like we do in the, in the continuous improvement realm, right? As we're shifting behaviors, as we're developing capabilities within the organization, mm -hmm. it's a journey. It's not like you go take this, this training, you put into practice and it's, it's one and done. So, and then uh, I also like to tell organizations or tell my clients that um, it's a good time as you're making this shift to look at your performance metrics because a lot of people, uh, well, you know, there's this, there's a saying out there that people don't do what you uh, expect, they do what you inspect, right? And so when people think about um, trying to deliver on a daily basis for the organization, they also are thinking about when it comes to performance appraisal time and impacts to their merits or to their bonus, right? Do those things align within the organization? So that's another very, very important thing that, to, that I uh, challenge organizations to consider. So given that, given that little um, intro, if you will, around what, where the organization, what's driving the organization for change, what's driving the, um, the the need for leaders to lead as coaches. I also want to I want to dive now into this whole thing about coaching. I think it's very important that everyone start with a, a, a fundamental understanding of what how they define coaching. So I have a couple of definitions that I want to share with you. So here's one: coaching is unlocking a person's potential to maximize their own performance. It is helping them to learn rather than teaching them. And this is from Timothy Galloway. And then here's the definition from the International Coach Federation. Coaching is partnering with clients, or you can say coachee, in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their professional, personal, I'm sorry, personal and professional potential. So one thing that to notice about these definitions is that it's really about the coachee. And this can be confusing in the lean space because um, uh, if you've ever worked with uh, senseis, you tend to, uh, my experience, I'll say, my experience um, was that I didn't always know what my potential was or even what I should be learning in some instances because of the Socratic method of, of teaching and training. So you have to get really, really clear in this partnering agreement when you start to lead as a coach, right? Because again, you want to move from command and control to being able to really help people um, navigate in various situations, but do so in a way that takes them towards where, towards the business objectives. All right, so then when you think about, um, you know, what it means to lead as a coach, again, it's going from, from command and control, and it's creating a model that allows managers to give support and guidance rather than instructions. That's a tremendous shift for a lot of organizations. And it also means that, again, when you're, when you're, uh, when you're uh, in this transformation, that you're very clear on when decisions need to be made and instructions need to be given and people need to be taught versus when you're actually in the role of coaching, right? So it's not a one and done. It's not a one and, uh, a one and all. You're switching out, you know, become being a manager, being a leader to, to only being a coach. You have to know when you when you play that role and you have to be clear when you're in that role the second part about what it means to be uh, a coach is um, to create this environment where employees can learn how to adapt right because we're talking about the dynamic changes and shifts that are happening within organizations and change 
that I'm seeing with my clients is that it's happening so fast. It's almost like, you know, we used to have these three-year um, breakthrough objectives and we were on a consistent path. And it's, it's getting more and more challenging for organizations to really hone in on what those breakthrough objectives are because things are changing so fast and so rapidly. Um, that they're trying to keep pace and there's so much uncertainty around how to how does technology play a role? How can we leverage technology? Um, how can we innovate from from a product perspective? So you have all of these dynamics going on, but you want to create an environment where your employees feel like they're able to handle the rapid pace of change and do so in a way that uh, allows them to feel like they are making a difference, like they're have they're contributing to meaningful work, and that they have the support that they need. And then there are various coaching models out there. There's the Grow model, Coaching Funnel model, Oscar, Cigar, many, many more. And you know, in the Lean community, we actually refer to Kata Coaching. And then we have the improvement kata, and then we have the coaching kata. And typically in the coaching kata, we have a set of questions that we start to lead with that really help people to open up and, and get some understanding about um, the, current the current condition, where they're trying to go, um, how they're going to experiment, what hypothesis they want to have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of these models work wonderfully. But the point that I want to leave you with here is that there are a couple of things that I always recommend. You have to know who, what your leadership style is. So when we talk about the solution, you have to know what your leadership style is. You also have to know the people that you will be coaching. You have to understand what works for them. And you have to find or define, I'm sorry, find or design a coaching model that works for that environment. And there are also, there's also a time and place where multiple models can work in tandem. So if you're focused in on only improvements, right, the coaching kind of model may work wonderfully, but then the grow model may help you work directly with the coachee, right? So you can work them simultaneously. All right. So so that's the real point, the point um, as it relates to how do you select a model? Um, and when it comes to this thing about certification, um, when I think about the trends that the ICF, um, ICF uh, Federation study revealed, what I'm seeing is that uh, certification might not be a necessity, but what is a necessity is up-leveling your coaching skills, right? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a, in, uh, just a moment, actually. So some of the coaching skills that, um, that I keep in my repertoire and am constantly working to develop are these. One, listening. So I'm always uh, working on being able to listen from, from an active perspective, listening more effectively, listening with empathy, things of that nature. Questioning, that's probably the most popular in the lean space, right? We always talk about humble inquiry and uh, asking great questions, asking questions that aren't leading, uh, but are actually very powerful and helping people to, to think uh, and to learn. Um, you know, I always joke that um, my sensei, Mr. Yamada, he would never answer a question. Rick Harris would never answer a question when I work with them. They would always, if I ask them a question, they would always uh, give me a response with another question. And then they just be, take get the opportunity to be quiet because they knew that by asking me the question that we were they were going to in turn help me develop. Um, I put an asterisk beside two of them because uh, I read in a, in a um, Harvard study that these two are perhaps the most difficult um, for people to remember and to develop as coaches. One is letting the coachee arrive at their own solution. We always want to support, we always want to guide, but sometimes we will go over and lead them to our solution, which doesn't always help them grow. And then recognizing and pointing out strengths. That's another one we don't tend to focus on. Um, so again, what I want to do is I want to touch on three 
coaching skills that I think will help you in this short amount of time. I wish I had more time, but three that I think will help you. And then you can always work on developing these others. The first one is we talked about asking powerful questions, but I want to talk to you about a technique called reframing. And so when you're in the process of asking powerful questions, we tend to do so in a way that uh, guides people to uh, the lean approach, if you will, that works best for them. In this instance, I want you to think about it in working with the coachee. And think about how you can ask questions, ask powerful questions that help the coachee see things from a different perspective or different viewpoint gets them out of their own blind spot. Um, I can recall working with a group of engineers and they had very, very, um, they were very, very um, much married to the way that they had always done things. And so when we started talking about introducing lean to that engineering group and, and being able to speed up their uh, development time, um, it was very, very challenging for them to get to see uh, things from a different vantage point. No matter how much you talk to them about, you know, uh, your competitors are looking for you to innovate and to bring products to the market in a much faster pace. Uh, you know, no matter how much they could rationalize, yeah, there are probably some waste in our process and a lot of delays they were still stuck on the fact that if we don't take enough time to truly test our designs, there's so much risk once the product gets into the market. So I had to come up with a lot of um, techniques to get them to think about things from a different, different perspective, to get them out of their own way, and to then help them reframe the risk in a way that helped allow them to move forward, right? So not minimizing the risk, but being able to position them in a, in a way where I'm not manipulating them, but I'm, I'm, I'm helping them to see things that, uh, yes, the risk that you've identified is very important. However, um, if we were to see some things in a different way, how might we do that, right? And so that leads me actually into the second coaching skill that I wanna talk about. And that's really working to teach people to overcome obstacles. Um, uh, and I call this, um, you know, helping them identify the real obstacle. So while they were saying to me that the issue was testing, uh, their testing in the marketplace, I mean, testing the products thoroughly enough before they introduce it in the marketplace, the real problem or obstacle, um, wasn't even that it was actually, um, some other areas. Uh, such as um, trust, right? Trust in their ability to deliver to the marketplace um, what they were asking. They had not been permitted to innovate at a very high level and some other things. And so that getting to the real problem, the root cause is what we typically use in lean community. But being able to do that with a coachee and helping them uh, and helping them identify some strategies to overcome obstacles. Three of them that I wanna to introduce to you today are, one is helping them dream about what it would look like without the obstacle. So if you didn't have this obstacle, what would good look like? Then helping them find a way to work past it, right? So yes, this is truly an obstacle. What are some things, what are 10 things that, that you could do to overcome them and just, go through a brainstorming uh, exercise with them and then help expand on those ideas to get them past the, uh, those, uh, moving past those obstacles. And then the third coaching skill is reflective practices. So we talk a lot in the lean community about reflection, right? We reflect on our A3s, we reflect from an improvement perspective, but this is reflecting from a coaching skill set. So the first one I wanna talk about is strengthening your presence. So as you're thinking about moving from managing to leading as a coach, and you've got all of these things going on in the workplace, you've got goals you've gotta hit, you have all these meetings you have to go to, your time is very limited, you have to really, really work on managing distractions, 
before, during, and after your coaching sessions with people, um, creating space. I actually wrote uh, with, with um, Tracy Richardson an article called uh, Space to Think, and I, I put that note here so that I can remember to uh, to introduce that to you guys. And it's you can actually find it on LinkedIn. It's Space to Think. And we talk about this very thing about the rigor that, that leaders have now, and they really don't even have time to think. OK, let alone coach other people. All right. The second one is empathy building. This is one that it's, it's a develop a reflective skill for you. So after you have a coaching session, you really want to take time to to um, reflect on how you as a coach showed up, right? So did you show up having a lot of internal dialogue about what the coachee was saying? Did you exercise judgment? your own judgment onto the co onto the coachee? Did you influence your solutions to the coachee? Uh, and it's really about helping you improve your ability to listen to what does this situation really mean to the client or to the coachee? And then I put a reference here for you. Um, I struggle to pronounce this guy's name, but it's, um, there's, it's called the ladder of inference. Right. And when you look at the ladder of inference, you'll be able to see sometimes how we as coaches show up and impose our beliefs and our thoughts onto the coachee. All right. So that's the second one. And then the last one that I want to introduce to you is the, it's the courage to challenge. OK, so. I talked about these organizations being in transformation, being being on and the, the coach, I'm sorry, the um, the leader being on a journey, right? And so it's going to be really important that you're able to manage yourself and your ability to bring awareness. You know, sometimes the things that we have to share with our coachee aren't always good things. So you have to be courageous in being able to challenge the system, to challenge uh, what you're observing and be able to provide very, very uh, solid and tangible feedback to the coachee because this is part of helping their development. And it could be that, you know, these the things that, that you need to share with them or the things that you're observing are things that are will hold the culture back from moving to a culture that actually uh, is a, there's a safe environment and one that is uh, productive to lead as a coach, right? It's going to be very, very important that people, um, even though they will ebb and flow between management and command and control to coaching, that you keep moving them forward towards that coaching environment, all right? And so I know it's been really quick, but I want to take a recap here. Um, it's very, very important that the organization express and understand the purpose of intent of why the organization wants managers and leaders to lead as a coach. Why are you asking people to change? Then secondly, the organization must define what organizational design changes and cultural changes need to happen to support managers and leaders uh, leading as a coach. And then the third thing is be very, very clear on developing, on the development plan and the organization supporting and training on developing coaching skills. Again, do you need to have a, a certification? I don't think you have to have a certification. I'm a personally um, certified and believe that there are things that I've learned from uh, certifying in, in, in various coaching practices uh, and it always helps me upskill, but I do that because of how I need to serve my clients and show up for them. But if I were in my previous role when I was working in corporate, I think that I would be fine with um, with a plan to up-level my coaching skills, whether it's communication, listen, listening, uh, whether it is um, servant leadership, whether it is um, asking powerful questions, or whether it's helping to identify strengths and being able to leverage assessments such as strength finders, all of those various things. I think that um, I think that it's just an individual decision and maybe perhaps an organizational de decision in terms of the ROI on whether or not uh, people should get certifications. But the one thing I want you to take away is that um, again, it matters most. 
that you understand your leadership style, that you understand the coaching, various coaching models that will work in various situations, and that you're able to leverage them at the right time and in the right place to help the coachee move forward. That to me is the most important thing. So, so with that, I hope that this has been informative. I know it was really quick. Um, and uh, if you have questions, you can call me or email me. The information is right here. Um, and then I would love to hear, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn at Crystal Y. Davis and just share your thoughts on, uh, on the, what, on the uh, information that's provided. And let's continue to have dialogue and learn from one another.